God has responded to our prayers, saying it is now possession season. All creation is waiting for a prophetic generation. It's unbreakable, unshakable. It's possessable for those that dare to believe. I prophesy the greatest miracles are going to happen in the next season. This season is going to see a transforming of our people. It's time to set your foot, say it loud, and shoot it straight. Hi, I'm Steve Penny. Welcome again to Say It Loud through our Epic Church Ministries. And uh, I want to preach again. I'm I'm actually going to do a series, probably of three weeks in a row, if we can, on the subject of vision, increasing vision, larger capacity vision, a multiplication vision, And so I I think this will be very helpful, very challenging for all of us uh, in going forward. These are exciting days. Our God word for 24 is, He brought us out to rich fulfillment. In order for that to happen, you have to adjust, expand, renew, awaken your vision again of what God's promises have been in your life in past years, and I'm challenging you. Next few weeks on this first one is an increasing vision, all right? Come with me in the Scripture, in the Bible, to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. I love this story in the Bible. It says this, And the sons of the prophets, the younger generation, said to the father, Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go down to the Jordan Valley area and let every man cut down a tree to take a beam from there that, and let us make there a place where we may dwell and God can dwell there. And so he answered the younger generation, he said, well, go. And then one of them came to the prophet Elisha and he said, sir, please consent, say yes, that you will come with us, your servants. And so he answered, Elisha said, yeah, I'll come with you, I'll go. And so he went with them. I love this. He went with them. There's no generational thing in the church. We need everybody, everyone together in an increasing vision. So he went with them. And when they came down to the Jordan Valley, they cut down trees. And as one of the young guys was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out saying, Alas, Master, that axe head was borrowed. It's gone. And so the man of God said, Where did it fall? And so he showed him, pointed to the place where it disappeared into the river. And so Elisha cut off a stick of a tree. They're harvesting trees for planks. So he cut off a stick off a tree and threw it into the water where the axe head sank. And he made the iron float. That was a miracle of God right there. Therefore, Elisha the old guy said to the young prophetic son of a prophet, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and he took the axe head and put it back on the shaft so he could renew and get engaged in the vision again. So let me bring some simple points out of this message. I want to apply to us. I'm so convinced that we're in an amazing season of reaping, harvesting, building buildings, growing church. In this 
season when the world's gone nuts, gone crazy, the church is arising into powerful influence together. Here's the first thing the new generation are saying. The place that you have for God to dwell is too small for us. Man, this is hard when you get old to think that the younger generation know much. And uh, here they come saying, where what you've given to us and all that, we love it, but it's too small. Maybe they're saying it's too elite. The church amazingly becomes an elite gathering of the, 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 the righteous ones. We're not like the world. We're the elite. We're God's favorites. Maybe they're saying this too small place, it's too restrictive. All your rules and regulations and your laws and culture, customs and everything else are way, way out of date. And this is a huge talking point, debate and everything. No, it's not. We have to reach the generation. We don't change what God has put in us, but sometimes we have to change what we put around us. And so it's too restrictive. Maybe they're saying of this place that's too small, it's too narrow-minded. It's too legalistic. I, I'm amazed how many people have allowed religion to make them very self-righteous, narrow-minded and legalistic. How can you reach a generation if the place that you want them to come to is too small to accommodate them so that they can be restored? How can you reach the lost if you're too busy practicing your legalistic routines in a small place? Maybe they're saying of this place that's too small for them, you're too self-focused. Man, I've seen in churches I've been a part of where Christians been 50 years on the journey and they fight over someone else sitting in their seat in the building. No wonder God can't send us a harvest of souls. There has to be a shake-up so that the place that's too small to accommodate the harvest, we release a new generation to build something that is able to house a new generation of souls. Another thing about this place being too small, the church in many places being too small, is that the resource is too limited. It's not enough to do significant things. And so the church stays small, it pays its bills, it uh, prays that needs will be met, but it never ever becomes a breakout influential company of people. And I, I just feel at present, despite all the stuff that's happened with mega this and leader this, and God is doing something in His church for such a time as this. And it's called He's Increasing Our Vision Again. He's Increasing Our Vision Again. And one of the things about resource is that religious people really don't give a lot. They really are not the, the key resource providers. i tell you who is the harvest. The harvest brings the resource. And when souls are saved, they come with gold coins in their mouths. When they come, they come with a heart that says, I've been blessed and forgiven. I, I can only live to be a blessing. And so you'll find religious people don't give a lot usually, uh, but those who are forgiven much, give much. When you start to reach the lost, all of a sudden the resource to do more starts to become a flow of supply. And that's what this younger generation saying. You don't have to stay with old, retarded, ancient procedures, equipment and all the stuff. If we reach the lost, they'll be so thankful to God. They'll pour their lives into the season of harvest. So they're saying the right things this generation. God, it behoves us that we listen to the voice of God clearly at such a time as this. And so 
Elisha the prophet, man, he's seen some stuff in his day, phenomenal stuff. He's raised up a whole Sons of the Prophets ministry school. And now they're saying, we think we can see even more increase. And so the prophet says, all right, go. No great debate or, you know, he feels it in his heart. These young guys have got my anointing. They are hot for God, but they want to have a go in their generation. And so he says, go. He says, go. What if you're sitting in a church and you're telling all the young ones, hey, slow down. Hey, put the brakes on. Hey, chill. It's not your time. Just remember, Elisha, the great prophet, who saw Elijah go up in a rapture. And he sees this younger generation. The younger generation's always full of hype and hope and, you know, sassy, uh, arrogance and what boldness, whatever. They're always, that's what, that's the beauty of youth and confidence. But this Elisha, he sees the hand of God on them. And so he says, go. I'm praying that in every church that I'm associated with, there'll be a spirit of go. There'll be a spirit of go. There'll be a spirit of you're ready. There'll be a spirit of God can use children if they're willing. There's a spirit of go. You hear me? I'm praying right now the Holy Spirit will do the preaching right now about your spirit, your attitude to church, to the lost, to the unruly members that come in that are not yet as clean and upright as you are. I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to you about saying, go, it's your time. You're, right, you're here in church right on time to be a legend and we want you to do that. The incredible thing is when the older generation empower the young to go, to be the foot soldiers, to be the front liners, have a go at anything, then one of the new generation came to Elisha and said, we want you to come with us. You're not irrelevant. You're not past your prime. You're not an old uh, retard, you've got stuff on your life that we need. We'll do the running, the fighting, the jumping, the shouting. We'll do all of that, but we desperately need you to come with us. He sure had taught the sons of the prophets well that it takes the whole company of the redeemed to bring about a revolution of righteousness. And so... This young guy was saying to Elisha, we recognize the presence of God, the purpose and the power of God on you. We're still learning that, but we want to have a go, but we want you to bring that, the presence, the purpose and the power of God. You bring it so it comes with us as well in the new frontiers. And so off they go. Elisha goes with them. And uh, they get down to the river. And here's the point. Next point, whatever the points are. The axe head is essential to the mission. See, the vision is to build a house for God and for the people that they harvest for God. That is the vision, to build a place where the harvest can be raised in godliness. So the axe head to cut down trees, to make beams, to build the house. The axe head is essential. This is not a nice musical program. This is getting into it to build the house that the harvest are going to engage in. So the axe head is to build the house of God. But the mission, the axe head's the vision. But the mission is different to the vision. The vision is to build the house of God, but the mission is to cut down trees. How many people sit dreaming? Oh, I can't wait till we get the right place as the house. No, no, the mission is to cut down trees, to find land, build, possess and occupy. And so the mission was to cut down trees, to build and create pillars and beams 
for the house of God, in the house of God. And so to do that, everyone with the vision of a great house for God has to be on the mission of having a sharp axe head. So sad when a church is full of dull, blunted people that just want a little inspirational touch every Sunday, but are not sharpening their axe head to be on the mission of reaching the lost and cutting down trees to shape them in discipleship for the house of God. So that's the mission. Cut down trees to become beams and pillars in the house of God. See, the truth is this. Every one of you here today, the truth, if, we, if, we, if we're going to have an increasing vision, we must have discipleship as the sharpening tool in the church. A church without discipleship is a church with inspiration and, and enthusiasm, but dull-edged people. Discipleship is the sharpening tool that sharpens everyone to have their own axe head, sharp to go and reach and reap trees that become beams that build the house of God and occupy the place of God's presence. So our vision, if, we were, if we're going to have an increasing vision, you have to keep the vision sharp. You have to keep the vision sharp. One man here lost his vision edge. The axe head flew off his handle and sank into the river. And he cried out, Alas, master, my axe head was borrowed. Well, I add some other words. When the axe head is borrowed and blunt and broken, it soon flies off and ceases to be of any use in the mission, the mission to reap trees, harvest beams for the house of God. And so here's the point. When people are not discipled, and you watch, there is a whole fresh surge, a wave, an emphasis of churches saying we haven't been discipling well. We've copied the big, uh, you know, on stage performance presence churches, but we haven't had the behind the scenes discipling of those that we have reaped. And so the vision has to be owned, has to be owned. Too many people in church come in, they get a touch and they think, oh, I just have to copy and do the same thing without being discipled and sharpened to be a part of the mission of reaching the lost. And too many people lose their edge over time, whatever reason, and they walk away from the vision. People that have a borrowed salvation, a borrowed anointing, a borrowed church culture soon become blunt and broken and end up walking out and away from the mission. The mission of the church to reach people and turn them into beams to build a great house for God. You've got to own it. And so you've got to listen. If you're part of a church, you can either be in the discipleship journey or leading someone else through it. You've got to get the discipling, the sharpening of the axe head. So they literally possess, they get their own sharp edge of the Word of God. They keep it sharp by the anointing and presence of God, by being in fellowship with faith people together. They own their own and it's sharp. It's not blunt or borrowed. And they can do something significant for Christ by building a church for the lost. I love this message. It's part, this is the first of my vision series. And here's my challenge. Today, you have to become a vision carrier. It's not enough to borrow someone else's vision, to borrow a culture where we all talk about something, but no one's sharp to actually do the mission of reaching the lost 
of discipling people into beams that make the house of God strong. We have to become a steward of the vision, a vision carrier, so that you not only see and hear about the vision, but you carry it into the mission. And all of a sudden, streams of people out of the forest of humanity are starting to be cut down by some sharp-edged missional person, a vision carrier, and they're bringing them into the house to be turned into beams, pillars, strengthen the house and to carry a sharp edge to then go and cut down more trees in the name of Jesus. My challenge today is are you engaged in the mission? Have you still got a sharp edge? Or have you been dulled by disappointment? Have you been blurred by brokenness or baggage weighing you down? I tell you, this is a great season to get sharp. I can't do that for you. You have to, in the Word of God, start to sharpen the edge of your life. And in your devotions, get the anointing that gives you strength to swing the axe. The anointing gives you strength, but the Word gives you sharpness to do the task. And I'm praying for every one of you today, wherever you are, May you hear the call to, to increase your vision. Enlarge the place where you dwell, the Bible says. Many shall be your children, if you will. Increase your vision. Enlarge the place where you dwell. You'll see an incredible harvest. I'm praying blessing in Jesus' name upon you today. May the richness of His grace be your portion. But may the clarity of His Word be the sharpening edge of your life. And may the strength of the anointing empower you to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint, to go into the forest, the harvest fields, and reap trees, strong branches that become beams in a great house for God. I love you. Father, bless each one. Those that are away from God, restore them, bring them back. Those that are discouraged, Blunted by life, let your anointing lead them into all truth that they might be sharpened again. And may this season ahead be their best ever season. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hey, God love you. God bless you. See you next week. <laughs>